So for today's episode, we're going to talk about something very specific, IDN homograph attack uh, with Unicode. And so that's qu quite a mouthful. So I think it f it's first important to kind of break down what each of those words mean. Um, IDN is international domain names. So these are domain names that can work across countries. Uh, homograph is a term for different characters that look alike. So a character in English may look like a character in Cyrillic. Um, or a, you know, a character in English may look like a specific Spanish character with maybe just an asterisk on top. Unicode is an international coding standard uh, for use with different languages, so Japanese, uh, Chinese, Spanish, so that, so that the scripts and underlying languages can communicate with different computer systems by which each letter, digit, or symbol is assigned a, a unique number value that applies across different platforms and programs. Before we jump into the specifics of the IDN homographic attack, I, I first wanted to run through some phishing examples, some more generic phishing examples, and, and show some of the hallmarks to look for um, that you're dealing with a potential phishing attack. And then we can dig a little bit deeper specifically around the homograph attack. So in this example, so this is a, an email uh, that supposedly is from Microsoft. The first thing you can notice is the fake email address, the dot on Microsoft.com. So it's clearly not a Microsoft.com address. Um, you can see an attachment um, that you may or may not be expecting. Another signal is the dear customer or dear user. Very generic entries to start. There usually is an urgency flag, so invoice due now, or there's gonna be a threat against you now, or the IRS is going, going to come after you now, right? So it's kind of some type of urgency message. Poor grammar is often there, um, not using apostrophes or commas, misspelled words, and then the, the actual bad link. So here's the, the link you click on, and it, it resolves to this IP address rather than a specific URL. Moving on, this is an email from a kind of generic help desk. Uh, you can see the email is missing the two. It just says undisclosed recipients. Again, a very impersonal greeting. Poor spelling and clunky grammar is another sign. And you can see another link here that clearly is resolves to a generic IP address rather than a, a URL that, that's secured. And again, the, we will terminate your online services. So there's that threat, there's that urgency. And then also it can be a, a generic signature at the end. Thank you, IT staff. One more quick example here uh, is from, it appears to be amazon.com. So again, generic dear client, the email is mazancanada.com. It's missing an A. The generic link, this one's not an IP address. This one does show Amazon. So it has a little more, but once you hover over it, it actually has a redirect link to a the actual uh, K-E-R-E-S-K-E-D-J.com. So the text shows Amazon, but when you hover over it, it's not the actual, the, the same link. Now, what makes IDM homograph attacks different is this example. So the actual link that you see will show www.apple.com. Um, it also will be secure, but this is actual, actually fake. So it's not an IP address. It's not a misspelled link. It's actually the real, it appears to be as if it's the real deal. Here's another example of a PayPal. So paypal.com, so this domain, domain it is not resolving properly, but it appears to be correct. So both of these last two examples are show clear domains that, are, that look like they're spelled correctly. They look like they're secure links, but they actually are examples of IDN homograph attacks. And so I'm gonna show you this next slide here. We can see the kind of what I mean by IDN homograph attacks. You can see Apple, Amazon, Bank of America. These are ex examples of these type of links that can often look very real. 
So you have the fourth one down on the list, the apple.com, the two P's aren't quite right, or the apple with an E with an asterisk on it. Amazon, also similar. Some of them look clearly misspelled, but some of them aren't .com. Some are, are, are .de or .eu, or there's a, a Z with an asterisk on it. Same thing from Bank of America. So these are links that are, have been forged in this IDM homograph attack fashion. And so we're gonna, I'm gonna actually dive in and show a demo of how these links are created. So in this demo, we're gonna illustrate how a hacker would, would establish a homograph attack and, and how easy it really is. So first they would download a package off Git called evil, evil URL, you know, real nice. Um, and then they would execute this Python script. And what this script will do, it'll allow you to enter really any, any type of domain name and, and produce an alternate name that looks very similar. And so for example, let's say we wanna attack someone's Gmail account. So we put in Gmail, we put in the domain name.com. And from there, it's created uh, this gmail.com string. And what it did is it inserted a Cyrillic small letter A to replace the normal Latin character A in Gmail. So to, to the average user, you're, you're never gonna see the difference. It looks exactly the same. So we copy this and we paste it in. And so that Gmail looks legitimate, but once we execute, it actually, the real domain that it gets converted to is this xn-gmail63d. And why this matters is this is the actual true domain name. This is the domain name of the server that the Black Hat owns, and he'll use that domain to clone a Gmail account or clone of a Bank of America server so that the login looks just like your Gmail or your Bank of America server, for example. You will enter those credentials because you clicked on that legitimate looking Gmail link in an email or what have you, get it to that login page, type in your username and password, it fails, and then boom. Now the black cat has your login credentials and you're kind of scratching your head figuring out what failed and why. Um, another way to kind of help mask this would be that um, in addition to just Gmail, you know, that link would have, let's say, uh, you know, this kind of random email, uh, set of numbers. It would say password, password reset, user one, two, three, four. So the black cat would really create a convincing link um, that looks to be very legitimate. And so what you actually click on is that full link. And once it's executed, again, the Gmail gets actually replaced because it's not truly gmail.com. Uh, it has that Cyrillic A in it and it's converted through the browser into this actual server domain name that's registered. And that is the threat and the risk. The next logical question that arises is which browsers are vulnerable to this type of attack? Well, the truth of the matter is that this type of attack has been known since 2001, but a lot of browsing vendors have struggled to fix the problem because it is a fairly complicated issue to solve. Um, known vulnerable browsers include everything from Chrome and Firefox to Opera and even Internet Explorer. Uh, Microsoft Edge, Apple, Safari um, have fixed these vulnerabilities and Chrome, to my knowledge, has addressed this in version 59. So what can we do as uh, consumers of these browsers to prevent this type of attack? Well, the first thing is update your software patches on your browsers. Try to always get the latest. Whatever browser you are using, make sure you're using the latest one. Uh, the second is third-party Chrome extensions. Uh, add-ons available in the Apple Store that users can install to get alerts every time they come across a website with Unicode characters in the domain. So again, if, you, if you're doing the first one, you probably have the latest Chrome browser, you're probably in good shape and this add-on is already built in, but there are still a lot of consumers out there who are using older browsers. And then the third one is password managers that autofill based on valid domains. 
So these password managers will notify you if, if a domain um, does not quite look right um, and it's possibly using those type of Unicode characters. And so if, if you have a password manager for B of A and it tries to autofill into a B of A domain that's using those Unicode characters, it won't work because it, it won't be able to resolve the domain name because the domain name is, may look the same, but it's actually different. As always, be sure to like, subscribe, and provide comments.